bigger question is whether or not we want China or other countries to get the message that all they have to do to get leverage over the Canadian government is randomly arrest a couple of Canadians. The Prime Minister today rejected calls to release Meng Wanzhou despite the mounting pressure from a group of former Canadian diplomats and parliamentarians. So what is the political way forward with China? What does this mean for the detained Canadians? It's Thursday, and I'm here with that issue. Chantal Hébert, Andrew Coyne, and Althea Raj. All right, let, let's start with the Prime Minister's response today. Uh, Chantal, it seemed uh, probably the toughest uh, language he has had to date uh, on this issue, although he's been criticized that the language was wasn't tough enough before. What did you make of his response? Well, it did call for a clear answer. It's hard to think of how you could be on both sides of, uh, of this issue at this point. Uh, it's clear that pressures are mounting on uh, the Liberal government to kind of make a deal, a trade-off, in part because of the feeling, I suspect, of the people who signed this letter that um, Increasingly, the two Michaels are at risk. The accusations of spying uh, and the prospects are becoming increasingly glum. It is also clear that uh, all of those realities do not offer uh, the Trudeau government a proper exit strategy from the line that it has been keeping, which has been that it does not engage in the hostage negotiations. And at this point, that is what it had become. Mm -hmm. uh, a group calling for Canada to engage in hostage trade-offs uh, and the Prime Minister uh, saying, well, if we do it for this, anyone is going to say Canada's free game, let's just yes. pick anyone and go forward on this. Yeah, I mean, I think that 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 point, Andrew, is well taken. If you if you if you if you do this, if you bend, at, at what point will some other country try this? Um, and and so, how do you reckon with that? How does any government reckon with that? Not just any other country, but also China itself. Yeah. Uh, we don't even we're not even clear that they would actually yield up uh, the two Michaels if we did intervene and and release uh, Meng Wanzhou. They the the, the, the you know, the signatories, the 19 signatories, uh, the former Supreme Court justice and former Minister of Justice who before them had talked about this, they don't really seem to have given a lot of thought, or at least publicly, to the implications that way. Uh, now, they are fair game to say that we should be thinking about the welfare of the two Michaels, and obviously, uh, who, who, cannot, who can contest that? Mm -hmm. But we also have to think of the welfare of people who might be detained, kidnapped, taken hostage in future. Uh, either by China or by other countries. So the precedent argument, I think, is a powerful one. Um, and, and not only the precedent, not only the, the, the implications for uh, Canadians abroad in terms of hostage taking, but also the implications for our extradition system. We have an extradition treaty with the United States and with other countries for good reason, because we want to facilitate uh, the transfer of accused persons between countries, and we want to do so as much as possible within the confines of law and the judicial system and due process, and not by, as a result of you know, political deals, political pressure, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that would also be setting a dangerous and troublesome precedent in that direction as well. What, what, do you, what did you make of what the Prime Minister said today, Althea? Was it, was it the right message for right now? I think it's the right message for Justin Trudeau get, to give in order to be consistent with you know Justin Trudeau since 2015. Mm -hmm. When you think back about his policy position on paying ransoms, for example, those two Canadians who were in the Philippines, he said no. And the reason he said no was because it would just encourage other people to do this. And the same principle applies with um, with what's happening with China. I, I think the government had hoped that by reaching to international partners, to talking to other partners that have had um, coercion applied by China against them, like Australia, like Japan, like Korea, that um, there would be a soft diplomacy option available to them. You know, you could look at the lens where Canada sent 16 tons of personal protective equipment to China when they were grappling with the coronavirus uh, crisis with that lens, like, while we have this that is uh, really affecting our relationship and our trade relationship has also been affected, on the other hand, we're keeping that channel of conversation open. Mm -hmm. And right now, frankly, it looks like their main hope of seeing any movement is that there's a change in the White House come November and that uh, President Biden decides to uh, 
play hardball with the Chinese with regards to the two Michaels. But I think uh, just to uh, Andrew's point, I don't think that they didn't think the issue through these 19 signatories. When you look at people like Robert Fowler, Mr. Fowler, who was kidnapped in Africa and for whom a ransom was paid, though the government publicly denied it. Uh, we do know that foreign affairs officials uh, did things for Mr. Fowler that they normally would not do for other citizens. So in some ways, it's entirely consistent with some of the beliefs of the people who signed that letter. And I think it is deeply powerful. I think we would all want the government uh, to do a prisoner swap if it was our yeah. loved one in China. But I yeah. think to Andrew's point and to Chantal's point, I think we're all basically saying the same thing. There's a deeper principle at play here, and it yeah. is a dangerous one if we cave now. Chantal uh, wants in there. Uh, I think the government is kind of a, a, on a speedway on this, and there was an exit uh, that it was hoping for, and that would have been a ruling by uh, the BC court uh, that would have cast doubt on the extradition demand from the United States. And that would have provided Canada with some cover uh, with the US and the White House, and would also have been consistent with the message that we are guided by the rule of law. That didn't happen. Uh, and Justice Holmes did not uh, actually uh, rule in the way that many in the government, I suspect, uh, hoped for. But she also, in the process, shored up the case for going ahead with the extradition. So at this point, having argued for the rule of law and having had a court ruling that says this extradition uh, demand is based on law, Yep. It, it's hard to see how you push on the brakes in the middle of a highway to do a U-turn. But, but, uh, and I really, is, um, yes, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. yeah. There is one part of the letter from nine, the 19 dignitaries that I do agree with, which is that more, we have many more problems with China than just these two hostages. We have a tiger by the tail here. We have a, yes. we have a, a Chinese government, a Chinese dictatorship that is creating problems around the world is much more aggressive and assertive than it's been in the past and much more of a problem. And it is true, I think, that uh, our, our, we've been pulling our punches on some of these issues because of the two hostages. Now, the, the letter makes this bizarre suggestion that if we cave into China on this, if we capitulate and appease them in this regard, then we can get much tougher with them on other issues. Uh, I just don't think that's credible. But I do think the, the, the it does point to the need that we're going to have to basically make a decision that we're going to confront China on these issues, and mm -hmm. we cannot allow the fate of these two people, as, as troublesome as that is, to dictate our foreign policy more generally. It is certain. Uh, that this issue of uh, China trying to exert political pressure on Canada by having arbitrarily detained two Canadians in response to us fulfilling obligations under an international extradition treaty is uh, causing a challenge in our relationship. Back for another round of Ad Issue with Chantal, Andrew, and Althea. Althea, let, let's pick up where we left off there with what Andrew, I mean, uh, with Andrew was talking about in terms of foreign policy, the Prime Minister using the word challenging. I think we're probably past the point of being challenged, uh, of a challenging relationship between with China. But what does it say about the government's overall approach, not only to China, but to uh, foreign policy when we get into nitty gritty situations like this one? Well, I just wanted to pick up on Andrew's point, yeah. because I, I think that Part of the letter outlines things where these uh, high-ranking diplomats and former parliamentarians, including cabinet ministers, uh, rightfully point is that there are decisions that should have been made a long time ago that we decided, the government decided here, uh, not, to, uh, not to make because they didn't want to antagonize China. So primarily, of course, is the decision on Huawei. There is no real reason why we still have not publicly said what we uh, should do about allowing Huawei into our 5G network. There are other things that they point to our silence on what's happening in Hong Kong, but also the concentration camps in China. You know, there are things where the government says it has values, but it has not uh, vocalized them as loud as one would expect them. And you could also see, you know, our Security Council seat campaign in that light, not wanting to antagonize China and its possible influence in Africa, for example. Um, but now that that is done with, uh, I think that there is a real reckoning that has to happen in the Prime Minister's office that uh, our relationship with China is not what the Liberal government once thought or attempted to pursue. And so perhaps we should be looking at it, it is going to be a tough pill to swallow. It is our second largest trading yeah. partner. Yeah. Um, but we are not in a position like Australia, for example. We have the opportunity to rejig our economy and um, suffer less. 
painful, absolutely. And the government will be criticized on all corners. Uh, I think of universities, for example, a quarter of foreign students are Chinese. But it, one of the things that, that uh, Michael Kovrig's uh, wife said, uh, separated wife, but his wife said it, it is today that if, if you're not going to do what the letter has proposed and you're not going to do what we're saying, what are you going to do? And is that not the stage that we're at here, Chantal, where if you're not willing to do one thing, you cannot just sit and wait for something to happen? Well, that's really interesting because I've read it in a number of commentaries, but I'm still waiting to see what that something is. Mm. Um, that's easy to say, then you're going to have to do something. I suspect at this point uh, uh, that the something is to wait for the outcome of the American election uh, and the maybe more um, serene or more um, comprehensive uh, conversation with an administration in the U.S. Uh, and, and that goes to, to the crafting of our foreign policy, including on China. We are not in this debate because of some foreign policy move. We are in this because of some moves by the Trump administration. Yeah. Uh, and we do not craft the world's response to China uh, alone. So I, I think between now and November, it will still be a wait and see period. Last, last word to you, Andrew. There's something to be said in politics for, for delaying. When there's time, there's hope. Uh, I also think, though, that what the prime minister's statements today may signal is that a realization that there's little to be lost from a tougher stance with China, not just on the two Michaels, but on this broader foreign policy agenda that the nicely, nicely, softly, softly approach does not seem to have ameliorated them, does not seem to have have uh, have uh, brought them around at all. And that maybe some tougher measures, Magnitsky, Magnitsky style sanctions, for example, or shifts in foreign policy with regard to Taiwan, that these kinds of things may be may start to become in order now. Okay, good conversation. Thank you all very much for weighing in. Before we go, be sure to subscribe to At Issue, the podcast. Look for it on any major podcast app and our website, cbcnews.ca slash the national.